Welcome to the Two Blokes Chatting Radio Show on 94.7 The Pulse. Music, interviews, news and, well, two blokes chatting. Now, here are the two blokes. I've been everywhere, man, across the deserts, bear man, I've breathed the mountain air, man, I've traveled, I've had my chair, man, I've been everywhere. Been to Talamore, Seymour, Lismore, Malula, Bar, Nambour, Marooch, Dork, Kilmore, Marilla, Bar, Birdsville, Emmerville, Wallaville, Connawano, Connawan, Strath, Brown, Cross, Pine, Nella, Dalla, Darwin, Ginger, Nilla, Quinn, Muck, Dilla, Walla, Miller, Burgerville, Cumberilla, I'm a killer, I've been everywhere, man, I've been everywhere, man. Did I hear Macedon in there this morning? I didn't hear Macedon in there at all, but that's where we are going at 14 minutes to 11 o'clock. Rod, who do we have on the line? We have Robin Darby. She is uh, a friend of the show, and uh, husband's been on the show. Her daughter's, daughter's been on the show, and uh, it's only natural that she comes on the show. Uh, hello, Robin, and welcome to the Two Blokes Chatting Radio Show. Good morning. How are you guys? Fantastic. Doing very well, thank you. We love promoting uh, different parts of the region, and you are smack bang in the middle of the most beautiful time of the year to visit the town of Macedon because the trees are all changing colour, and when they change... It really is spectacular. Yes, yeah, the colours are just gorgeous. I um, have the pleasure, probably most days actually, I could go along our beautiful Honour Avenue and um, see the uh, the trees in their glory. Now, with the, uh, the wonders of social media and people with uh, very high quality cameras on their telephone these days, um, when I was up there in your company and you very kindly took uh, Robin and I around your village, people just everywhere with cameras in all sorts of strange places, totally disrespecting the traffic flow, I might add, um, just taking happy snaps. They're sending them all around the world. It's a pretty handy tourist guide, isn't it? Oh, for sure, yeah. yeah. Look, that, they currently, um, over the Easter break, I think most weekends while it's in um, the mid-time of autumn, they actually block the road off so so no vehicles can actually drive along the road. Um, and they have traffic controllers and all sorts of things because of the the amount of the, the volume of people that come through. But yeah, everybody, I rode along on Revenue yesterday and literally weaving in amongst the hundreds of people with their phones that all taking their selfies and their family photos with the autumn leaves. Uh, what's the uh, the population like at the moment? At the the swell of the the cafes and and uh, pubs and and general eateries is is this one of the the yeah. biggest times for the year? Yes, I actually went to the uh, local coffee shop, Mister Macedon. That's my my local, and uh, yeah, he was pretty exhausted yesterday morning, and the weekend hadn't even started. No, it's uh, it's quite amazing. The it, it's just beautiful, and if you haven't been up to that neck of the woods, and it's not just um, it's just just Macedon either. A, a, a day or a big chunk of a day at Hanging Rock is also quite spectacular. It's just a beautiful part of the world, and and I think during this COVID period, a lot of people who would be in Melbourne or even the Geelong region that would jump on an aeroplane and go to Bali or Hawaii or Fiji have found that let's have a look around Victoria. And I reckon your your area is one that a lot of people may never have been to before. But if you haven't, get up there. It's pretty darn good. Yeah. Actually, yesterday I was riding along and um, there was a woman standing there trying to get some photos and I actually stopped and spoke to her. She was from Colac and she'd never been to the Macedon Ranges. Um, she was staying in Lansfield for the weekend and just wanted to discover the area. And yeah, she was yeah quite. I, I sort of suggested a few local gardens for her to go to the Open Garden Scheme. So yeah, she was uh, enjoying it so far. So it was good. good to yeah, see. the only group of people that we would recommend don't go there is a small collection of private school girls. Picnics, um, not <laughs> <Yeah>. not ideal. <laughs> No, they may go missing. <laughs> the, the girl that you spoke to a lady yesterday, she, her name wasn't Miranda, was it, by any chance? <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, and the the beauty of it too, uh, uh, Robin, is is you took us through one of those aforementioned uh, gardens up there, which yeah. are also quite breathtaking, and there's plenty of them. Um, so the, just the beauty, the 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 quaintness of the area, but the the gardens and the trees and the the general. Um, uh, environment is just beautiful so get amongst it and the the good part about you is you reciprocate because you come down to our neck of the woods and uh, and love the the beautiful surf coast i do i feel very blessed that i get the best best of both worlds um quite a few of our friends we holiday at Torquay, and quite a few friends say oh why wouldn't you live down here but i we love we do love the macedon ranges and we don't have any plans of living down Torquay. though we do spend quite a few months down there 
during the year, but no, we do love the Macedon Ranges and then just what it has to offer. The other thing is too, if you get down, you'll be on babysitting duties all the time. There's only so much of that you want to do, isn't there? Currently got Ella here at the moment. Oh, hello, Ella. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the other the other thing that um, strikes me about the, the Macedon area is the, the train comes through from, from Bendigo. It's, it's a very commutable distance to Melbourne. So have you noticed in the last little while as the great Melbourne exodus has taken place that the, the, popula- the more permanent population has grown? Yes, um, my poor son is hunting around this area and as soon as houses come up on the market they're pretty much snapped up because there's so many people I think have realised um, because we're only 60k out of Melbourne and an easy drive on the colder I think a lot of people who have been working from home figure they'd prefer to be working from home in this area rather than down in, in um, busy Melbourne. Well, I think if you do the maths on that, then we're actually 10 k's further away from Melbourne than you are. And yet people go, oh, no, you go to Geelong, you live in Geelong, Geelong's just an outer suburb. But, um, you know, Mass is in fact closer and, and very commutable. Yes, yeah, we, we could say when we when people say Macedon, you know, we say, but literally there's no no traffic lights pretty much from the time we get on the freeway, which is just kilometres from our home, and we're pretty much right into the city before we have to deal with any traffic lights. Uh, Robin, we always ask our guests in this segment about the impact of COVID on your community, and I suppose being that far from Melbourne for a long period of time, it was just Melbourne's problem that you uh, sort of observed from afar we we were looking at numbers daily and thinking oh how horrible it had been down to there then it seemed to to get to us and then it went, went through a stage where it's oh we'll just learn to live with it because the numbers still daily no one bothers to check anymore but yeah we're still having thousands and thousands of new cases we've still got people in hospital on IC, in icu on ventilators and we're still um, having somewhere between um, five and 15 people dying daily so it's still living with us but how has your community coped through the the ups and downs of it yeah um i know a lot of business small businesses definitely like struggled with it with the and not having the tourists and all that sort of stuff uh, not having people coming up from melbourne and so forth um it's good to see a lot of the cafes and everything i think survived because they were and restaurants they were able to do the takeaway option um and the local pubs but, um, it, yeah, it's nice to see that things are, I think, you know, what we might say pretty much back to normal. But um, also people are still being, you know, sensible and aware of all the whole hygiene thing and everything. But, um, yeah, it, it was a bit tricky. And especially I felt quite bad for people living in uh, Melbourne Metro. While we did have, you know, we had acreage here and I could get out on a bike every day, ride along Aven- or on our avenue and things like that while people were in, you know, lockdown. So that was quite tricky to sort of, you know, know that that's what others were going through. The other thing too, people would probably associate with Maston, I can never remember whether it was Ash Wednesday or more frequently the bushfires that went through there. Uh, is there some sense of concern that that still happens every every summer, that there's still concern around bushfires? Uh, I think um, it's quite interesting that a lot of people who actually went through that still in the area and still put houses heavily in, in bushland. I think the uh, the whole fire brigade and, and the access and all that, um, they're quite um, sensible in how maybe how people build and access and all that sort of stuff. But uh, it, it, it is a little bit in the back of your mind. But it's like a lot of places you sort of, you're not going to not choose to live there for that reason. Yeah, and I think I'm right in saying too, just because we like to link everything back to music here, I think you'll find that there was a very famous Australian film clip filmed in your region, including up next to the cross on the top of Mount Maston. I think if you go and look at the film clip for Show Me the Way by Brian Cadd and Don Moody, you'll recognise some of the territory. Ah, OK. I'll have to have a look. Rob's looking stunned by that piece of news. No, it's just that I've been to that exact spot you were talking about, and that's another thing I forgot to mention. Uh, OK. It's a bit of a stroll to go up there, but it's um, you think, how on earth would they build this thing way up here? And it's just another beautiful part of the village. So get up there, everybody, and experience yeah. it, because it's a good place to be. It is. It is very nice. And, you know, people often say it's quite cold, but I'm standing here in shorts and T-shirt and quite hot at the moment. Yeah, it's pretty good. Hey, just on, on that period of time that you've, you've got to observe the beauty of the trees around the region, uh, at what stage of the cycle are we in at the moment and how much longer will it last? Yeah, I would say I uh, there's still quite a lot of green uh, greenery on the trees at the moment. So it you know it depends, I think, how... Um, how you know how warm and all it is, but I think there's still a few weeks of beauty around. So there's with the particular trees, there's some of the like the um, the different types of trees that actually turn colour and actually are sometimes more stunning than in Honor Avenue as the time goes on, depending on the type of tree. Mm. 
No, it's, uh, it's really well worth looking at. Well, if you're up that way, get into the cafe called Mr and say Robin sent you and they'll give you a hearty round of applause with the cup of coffee. Robin, thanks for joining us on Regional Wound Up and being Regional Wound Up Wobbin for us today. <laughs> and we'll look forward to seeing you down here soon. No worries. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. Thanks, Robin. All thanks. the best.